And so our practice is to direct our awareness away from what was or what could be or what should be or what we wish was or any of those kind of things to be in the present moment. You know, and for these last couple of weeks, I've been talking about this, this, uh, this wonderful teacher called the Lotus Sutra by a man by the name of Patanjali. And he begins the sutra, if I can remind you again with this. Now, the teaching of yoga. Yoga is to still the patterning of consciousness. Then pure awareness can abide in its very nature. Otherwise, awareness takes itself in the patterns of consciousness. So, a lot like what we begin to understand about the mind-body connection. A lot of what we begin to understand about consciousness itself, the science of consciousness, which is this. What we pay attention to is the direction that we are going, and it is the, the, the container that begins to form the experiences that we have. But in that stillness, anything is possible. We are, as Dr. Holmes says, we are then free to flow into that infinite sea of receptivity. And there's a training for this. And again, as I've been talking about, and I think it's kind of our practice for the month, is something that uh, Pramahansa Yogananda talked about. The first is to follow a simple diet which proves suited to our own condition. And you know, of course this has to do with eating, but it has to do with so much more. You know, the, the constitution that we understand about who we are, the mind food, the things that we feed. You know, and again, I'm thinking of this Buddhist idea of mental hygiene. It's not just, as Jesus said, what goes into our body. But what do we take into our consciousness? What do our words say? They flavor how we see things. And if our constitution is the true self, divine, then are we nurturing ourselves in divinity or are we stuck in a material or secular existence? And a second injunction is this, is that a master, one who practices self-mastery, one who has realized themselves as an omnipresent soul, not just a body or an ego, perceives all beings with a striking similarity, meaning that we see the divine in all living beings, and that we see how interconnected we are with all living beings. I have this quote sitting in my head, and it's again from the book, The Ministry of the Future, where one of the people says, you know, humans made dogs from wolves, but dogs taught humans how to be people, in that how we socially interact, how we work cooperatively. And so there's a divine connection to everything. Everything is part of everything else. And then finally, what he says is this, is to learn to be comfortable within our own purse. And I believe what this means is, of course, not to overextend ourselves, not to burden ourselves, but to understand that in this moment, everything that we need is right here. When we practice gratitude, things begin to expand. You know, there is that biblical injunction that says that when we are trusted in small things, we are given great things. So it's really about mindfulness. It's about the value of prudence, how our present self can calculate the future self and organizes and plans itself accordingly. So let's consider that our practice, right? How are we nurturing ourself that supports the constitution of who we are. How are we practicing seeing the divine in all things? And how are we learning to be comfortable 
with where we are in this moment, realizing that when we are grateful in this moment, when we are present to this moment, it expands and grows into the limitless possibilities of all things. And so my dear friends, during this path of receptivity that we are on, I invite you to be open, to explore the idea that you are loving awareness and that loving awareness nurtures who you are, connects with all things beyond the veil of separation into the experience of connection and is grateful in this moment, allowing this moment to unfold into infinite possibility.